Hi everyone, Don Holling here with the Prep Girls uh, Hoops Illinois group and uh, Jacob Wolwin's with me again today and we're going to go through another one of our uh, AAU club interviews and so we are here today with Barry Bradford and a bunch of the uh, girls and some of the alumni from his example sports team. Um, before I turn it over to, to Barry, just wanted to say thanks to everybody who's taken the time to watch these videos. You, I started this up a little again at the beginning of April and in the last about 40 days, we've had about 4,200 people watch videos that myself and Jacob together or some of the things I've done on my own have been up. So we appreciate the attention and thanks for taking your time to uh, hopefully fill some of your girls basketball time that we're not getting by playing. So with all that said, uh, Barry, I'll turn it over to you and let it, uh, everybody hear the story of Example Sports. Well, first, Don, thanks to you and Jake um, and for Preps Girls Hoops for having us um, on your show today. Um, appreciate what you guys do um, to further the game. Um, and especially given any of our kids if just a platform to kind of get their names out there. So just, just you know, big thank you to you guys um, for doing that, though, too, and allowing us to be a part of that. So, um, but yeah, uh, Example Sports, is, it's been a great ride um, for us in terms of just trying to build a platform for our girls. Um, one of the things I would say for us is we, we've been going now since uh, 2010 with the Example Sports program, and we started off um, really focused on development, you know, um, for the first couple of years. There's a lot of skill work, development and training and um, started with an in-house program that was just about just learning how to take your weaknesses and in and, and a game-like situation and work on those, build confidence. And that's just all we focus on for the first couple of years. Um, as the program advanced and kind of get into, you know, one of our alumni that we have on currently right now, as the program advanced, we tried to uh, just continue to provide platforms for the girls to, and the guys at that time, but for speaking particularly on the girls pro platform, for our girls to kind of have an avenue to go out and compete at a higher level. Um, and then once we started to really get a feel for um, our ability to compete at a higher level, we then started transitioning with that first class in terms of um, from a recruiting standpoint side and you know an exposure standpoint side. Um, but just kind of getting back to the core of what we were uh, and who we are even to this day. You know, we want to really focus on just the whole person. You know, um, we always say we do life through basketball in example of sports. Like the ball part of it is cool and you know we're grateful for what we can do there. But just an opportunity for us to have um, and build relationships with our student athletes and um, help them to become well-rounded individuals and kind of partner with our parents in terms of like advancing those, those practical or those life skills, those things that these kids need to be successful um, beyond basketball, you know, and a lot of those traits and a lot of those attributes we felt um, are really able to be um, worked on in a basketball-like environment, you know, you know, the same way you listen to your coach, it's the same way you can lock in and listen to your parents or listen to your, you know, when you go on a job interview, eyeballs up, sitting up, intent of bringing positive energy to the workplace is the same thing you can bring to the bench, you know what I mean? Cheering for your, your teammates is the same thing you do with a coworker in terms of building a great company or being a part of a great company. So, um, you know, and then like I said, academically speaking, you know, understanding the importance of academics in the program and um, being there for them, whether it's, you know, just mentally, you know, we have a couple of different aspects of our program. Um, Aisha, my wife, who's uh, uh, one of the directors in our program, she has a program called I Am, which is about self-empowerment for the young ladies and helping them just to, you know, beyond basketball, you know, how do I see myself? You know, what am I feeding them to my ears? Like, you know, um, what type of image of myself am I building up that goes, like I said, beyond basketball? So I think that's really cool. And then we have a program called Rebound 24-7, which is about mental health awareness um, and just really helping our kids if they have any anything like any battles if you're dealing with you know suicide awareness and those things that may not traditionally be cool to talk about with somebody we want to make sure that we break those stereotypes and our girls know it's cool to talk about it you know and it's, it's literally let's just talk about it like it's, it's always the right time um so we're not carrying it and our, our kids and our girls aren't carrying this unnecessary stress that the world around them can put on them you know especially now with social social media and everything being you know so much more right in your face and you know it feels like everybody's getting a scholarship offer but me or everybody's having these great things happen but me and you know we wanted to help help our kids you know have an avenue and an outlet to um to battle some of those things even if it wasn't just us which we're we're um certified to be able to have those um conversations with them but we have outside licensed counselors as well too that they can talk to and just have a neutral environment and build so um those are kind of the layers of, of what we do but um we're, we're really grateful like i say i um it's a village mentality for us. You know, we got some great people that are part of it. My daughter um, also coaches and, and runs part of the program, which as well was really cool. And uh, my son comes back and help out. He's a college basketball player right now. He's actually a grad, a grad player. 
um, along with the rest of our coaches, you know, John Hill and Aaron Harrison and um, Alan Fudge and, and Jackie, like our list goes on and on of these people who are um, like really entrenched on the whole kid. It's not just basketball to them either. So we're really fortunate to have that type of staff that we have that really, really care, you know, about, about the kids. And even on the boys' side, I'm, I got a brother-in-law, Jamel, who coaches on that side. And they help out on this side whenever too. So um, you get the name and names, you forget somebody, I'll be in trouble. But to our entire village, it's, it's been pretty awesome. But um, so over the course of that history, kind of jumping back to it a little bit, um, and kind of why I kind of chose some of the alumni that I chose. Um, we had a group, which was my daughter's, was a part of that team. And I actually got on a, on a girl's side coaching uh, Don and Jake by running from my kids. So when my son was playing, um, my daughter was playing first. I was on the boys' side because I didn't want to coach my own kid. And then their group was dynamic um, and working really hard. Ryan Edwards was coaching that group. My brother still helps us out to this day. He's just as crazy as I'll get out. But he had them just playing really hard. And me and Martha talk about kind of how they built on that side, though, too. And um, they started to get better and better through the training, the development, just taking a, a bunch of homegrown kids who wanted to play the game. And in our area, there hadn't been a, a Division One signee um, for almost 20 years in the, in the Bourbon A. Kankakee County area. Uh, I think Brad Mann was kind of one of the last ones prior to um, what we did in our program, um, one of the last ones. And then uh, Martha Burst, who is on here, Martha became like one of the first ones in like 20 years for that to happen. And a credit to her and the girls off of that team that led the way, we've had a signee um, on the Division One side every year since. Um, even though for us, and I'll talk about that a little bit, I don't really care about level. I want my kids to go where it's comfortable, it's the best fit, and, you know, the whole nine yards. But um, so Martha and, and her buddies and Misha, they really just, you know, they got, got together and said, let's take this thing to another level. Um, and actually, I sat down with Martha. I said, Martha, there's some bigger programs out here that I can walk you to, you know, because you're really, really talented. And she was really ahead of a lot of kids at that point in time. And there was no AAU basketball in our area. And I'm like, hey, I can take you to a lot of different programs. I sat down with her and actually my son and said, you know, or we can stay here and you can try to build something up, you know, um, your way. And we'll still do everything we can and I kind of put you out there but I wanted that to be her choice um and so we sat down and had lunch one day and Martha's like you know what I want to I want to leave a legacy you know I want to leave a legacy um basically she's, I want to do whatever I can to help the people behind me and so we always tell her she's like um she's the queen bee on uh, on example sports you know she got busy and got it done for everybody else though too but they went out and competed and we had one scout on the sidelines IUPUI was our first scout to come see us and Austin and I laugh about that all the time. Whenever Austin, like one of our kids, I remember I was the first one that sat there all game long with y'all on that backcourt um, and noticed that we had some talent. And they did. We had a really talented group, but we didn't really have the platform to attract a lot of coaches. And, and like I said, Martha, and they were beating everybody and competing on, 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 on at the right level, the right way, and um, just took some time to build it all up. And so um, with that being said, that group, um, and when they got done, my son was coming up. So I switched and I moved to the girls' side um as my son started to grow up so I, can, I started coaching on the girls and I've been and I've just been there ever since um on, on that side though too and so like I said Martha and her group left a huge um huge legacy and platform the girls behind them. just not only just setting the standard for winning games but making it to every practice sharing the basketball with each other playing the right way caring about each other off the court I mean they all still talk to each other to this day you know and still support each other to this day which is pretty awesome and um, and Martha, you know, like I said, she she went on and had a great college career and has um, had a chance to finally play professionally. And she's wetting up beak over. I think she's and I think it's Portugal. Um, I think I got that right. Okay. Um, and so I'm just really proud of you know what she is. And so to this day, you know, we're right at about ten million dollars in scholarship offers. Um, and I can't even really count how many kids we've had go on to the next level. But it's been a huge amount on every level though too. And I think about what her and her teammates did and look at what we have now. And I'm, I'm grateful for that. So that has kind of been the overall trend of example sports and how we, how we kind of progress um, to the level we are now. And I believe right now we're probably one of the uh, most recruited programs there is um, in the state. And I say that to say how proud I am for what's happening with them, but I'm happy for any programs, any kids are getting recruited because we'll help anybody we can when we can. I don't really get into that, but. I am proud of where, where we've grown to. And I think we've tried to do it the right way through old fashioned hard work and playing good basketball. So that's my spiel um, on the example sports side of it. Hopefully that was some, remotely somewhere in line with what you guys are, are looking for though too. But, um, sure. I, you know, and I guess I can probably jump to Martha and Martha can kind of just talk, you know, a couple of minutes about 
you know, her experience, maybe what example sports experience was like for her and where she's at now and kind of which looks looks back and see it sees it now where it's at compared to when she started off with one uniform and uh everybody cramped into the van and not going to the airport like our girls do now. <laughs> Go ahead, Martha. You wanna you wanna hop in a little bit and kind of talk about, you know, your experience. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, to this day, we still talk about that. Like they getting first class treatment, <laughs> like on buses. <laughs> they were on on planes and everything. But overall, honestly, uh, example sports was like an absolute blessing. And it was more so not even had to do with basketball because at the end of the day, it's uh your regular life and then basketball. And what example did for me was just help me grow as a woman, as a young girl, like maturing into like womanhood that I am now, like. It was a wonderful group from like the parents to the coaches. It was just like beautiful how the community all came together and just was able to help everyone, everyone grow. Uh, I don't know, we had good times, uh, bad times, hitting push-ups in the middle of games for missed layups. Uh, it's just amazing to see. I, know, uh, I always hear how people talk about how they like watch a child grow. It's just like amazing and a blessing. Just thinking about it, how like we went from school buses, now we're on charter buses. We went from, <laughs> well, we, took, we went to Atlanta, I think that one time, and that one yeah. little itty bitty small van. I think it was yeah. like a eight to six hour ride. I'm like, now they were flying on planes. You just, I don't know, you just smile about it when you hear about things like that. And uh, I don't know, it just taught me how to handle things professionally, uh, be business minded about things. Uh, it created a lifelong family, even though we're not connected by blood. So, like, they're more family than some of my family members. It's just, I don't know, <laughs> it's just exciting just thinking, talking about it. Thank you. Thank you, MB. Uh, like I said, she's been so special in terms of just setting the mark and still being the example and still coming back to uh, to check on, on the girls, though, too. And so, like I said, Martha had the, she had the, the little van, and that was a 12-hour drive, Martha. You see, even get a little older, you don't even remember how bad it was with like three stops and like members like, and it was rain and storms at one time. It was like, nobody goes to the bathroom anybody anymore. We go in there, just hang on in there to actually having a bathroom on the bus. Um, so yeah, we appreciate you uh, setting the standard for us and helping us out with that as well too. And, and I'll kind of talk a little bit in between um, cams about one more transition was, but, um, and Cameron Taylor, who is, um, Man, just been a joy to have in the example family. Um, and and she's been the same thing, came in as a leader um, right away, was thrust into into the fire. And I held her accountable on a lot of levels and say, Cam, you're going to get coached here. A lot of people might just let you play. And one of the cool things about Cam when she came over, she said, I want to go to a program where I may not be the best player, but I want to be challenged and I want to be pushed and I want to try to grow as a basketball player. And And she had no idea what would happen to her recruiting when she came. We, you know, we try to under promise and over deliver. And I said, but Cam, if you come play the right way, you know, life will change for you on the recruiting side. And she comes from an amazing family, um, amazing mom, amazing dad. And, um, but we're so grateful to have her as a part of our example family. And she's at Marquette University right now. So she's all Big East um, freshman team um, and, and, and getting it done. I don't know how she got injured during uh, quarantine time, but that made us a different story. But Cam, go ahead and talk about your experience um, in example sports and, kind of how that process went for you. It's breaking up real bad though. I don't know if it's a little better. Still breaking up. Nope. Got me? There we go. All right, cool, cool, cool. So basically, um, you know, I came into experience. I had one year left left of, um, you know, example, one year left of AU. So I'm like, look, I need to get better. Um, I just want to be challenged a little bit more. So, you know, Barry came with all this stuff about how, you know, how he can develop my game and stuff like that. And, um, man, that year, it was great. I mean, you know, I developed a lot of relationships. I mean, of course, my recruiting went from here to just, you know, crazy heights. And, um you know, I built a lot of friendships and uh, definitely learned a lot of life lessons just about, you know, just life, you know, how to, um, I mean, handle situations, um, how to be a leader, how to be a good teammate. So, you know, those, those, uh, those, you know, definitely humbled me a lot. And um, definitely that 12 hour um, 
Atlanta Drive. That that, that definitely did something uh, uh, really, really well. But yeah, so my experience was definitely really good. Um, I think even those few months with Barry, just learning those lessons have made me a better, you know, person I am today. Um, helped me develop, you know, just things to react. You know, like I know how to react to certain things now, not and go over the bo- go overboard, and you know, I know I know how to think. Um, before I act, you know, just little things like that. He learned, he taught me how to just be patient and, uh, you know, trust in the process. And I think that definitely helped with, you know, me on my life side, personal side, mental side, and of course the basketball side. So, yeah. Good deal. Good deal. And congratulations to you on the success you're having at the next level and, um, and just the way you reach back. You know, I always give Cam credit for that too. Like I say, each time we get leaders in the program, she's just been another remarkable um, leader in that aspect. And it's cool because now we transition, Jake, I'm going to give it to you uh, guys with the young ones, but they don't know of these stories that Cam and Martha are telling. So Cam um, and her group really helped us take another step to when we transitioned from um, being an independent program to going to the UA um, circuit. So Under Armour, which our boys had competed a little bit on the Under Armour circuit, asked us to come on the girls' side. And I was a little, you know, I was a little skeptical at first, um, Don and Jake, because I didn't really know what they would provide on the girls' side. And we were already fortunate enough, you know, we have 30, 40 college scouts at every game courtside. So we, we had a good following, um, thankfully. But I wanted to know what else they would provide. And so they laid out this program of what, what they could do and what it would be like. And it and honestly exceeded our expectations. So we became one of um, 32 teams across the country, the only, the only team in Illinois to go to the UA circuit. And, and like I said, Cam, and that group with Taylor and everybody and Todd Rion, they helped put us on the map at another level to when they wanted to bring us on board. And so we went from um, from there to the UA circuit and we went to Atlanta this year, but we went to the airport and it was a two hour trip instead of being a, uh, <laughs> a 12 hour drive. And we, you know, so our girls are really fortunate. We, we fly and um, pretty much everywhere we go on big trips and they stay in really, really great hotels um, and they get, a little bit of the best of the best because they deserve it. You know, I know it happens on the boys' side a lot, but we felt like our girls deserve to to have that next level experience as well too because they they put in as much work or more and deserve that platform the same way. So because of people like Martha and Cam and the way it's continued to go generation by generation, Aaron and Hodges and Michaela Brandon, they were going to do the interview with us today. Um, Vanessa Sherrod, all our originals, I can name a bunch of them, but they all have purposely took it to the next level. So that's where we are today now. So now we're into plane rides and um, really good traveling and eating and the whole nine yards. Thanks, Martha. Thanks. And Cam ate a little better than Martha, but you know, now we really get to eat good. So Jake, I, I, I'm thankful for you guys having all these, uh, they still young in Stamito too. Grace finally wake, woke up for the day. So, you know, we can kind of, you can lead the way on that. I'm going to mute and just kind of hang out with you from there. All right. Thanks coach. I appreciate it. And, and thanks for sharing the story and, and thanks Cam and Martha for joining us as well. And kind of talking about your background with example. Uh, what we're going to do next, we got, uh, I think, seven total now uh, current players on that we're going to talk about. Just going to ask a few questions. Maybe they were provided to you beforehand just to introduce yourself, talk about your story, your history with example, and then get into a little bit of the basketball stuff and, and talk about your games a little bit. So, uh, Bryn, Anna, Faith, Grace, if you guys want to unmute yourselves here. Uh, and I'll start with Bryn. And just first question, I'll go for the four of you, is just kind of introducing yourselves. If you just want to start with name, high school, graduation year, height, and position, that would be a great starting point. So, Bryn, I'll let you take it away. All right. I'm Bryn Tabling, and I'm a junior, class of 2021. I go to Tuscola High School. Um, I'm 5'4", and I'm a point guard. All right. Thanks. And then Faith? Hi, my name is Faith Davis. I am 5'11". I'm class of 2021. And, um, crap. What was the next one? Uh, uh, my position is the shooting guard. All right, great. And then Grace, go ahead. Hi, um, I'm Grace, class of 2021, home with Um, And I'm 6'2". OK, what about position, Grace? Um, I'm a um, power forward slash small forward. Okay, gotcha. And then Anna? Uh, I'm Anna Griffin. I, I, I school to work Christian. Oh. 
I'm six one and I feel like a guard for it. Okay, great. And then Bray, I'll go back to you and just kind of tell us a how long you've been with Barry, been with Example Sports, and then what kind of that has meant to you as far as your basketball career and as far as your improvement thus far. So this will be my second year on the team, and I feel like I've learned a lot from it. It's helped me improve my leadership a lot. My recruiting process has been a lot easier because of all right, great. And then Faith, I'll bounce it back to you then. Same question, just talk about how long you've been with Example, what that's meant to you, and then kind of how you see maybe improvements in your game throughout those years. This is actually my fourth year. I've been playing since eighth grade. So playing with Example, it's improved my college looks. And I, I've become a basketball player that I never thought I would become. But it's helped me as a person too. Um, like never giving up, keep trying when you fail, and just work hard. All right, great. And then, Grace, uh, to you, just how long you've been with Example and then kind of how you how you treated that improvements you've seen throughout this, these years. Um, I've been with Example for four years. I played with them since eighth grade, and Example um, really helped my recruiting because I didn't even know there was a level of basketball past what I was playing when I was in eighth grade. And yeah, he just got us on the great circuit and lifted all of our recruiting really well. So, yeah. All right, great, thank you. And then Anna? Um, I was, this is my second year. So I would say that example was really well. Um, going from like a different AU team to this one, like not only basketball side, the people as well. Barry is a great coach, and he really taught me how to be a leader, even like on the court and outside the court. So I feel like, you know, it was good overall. So. All right. Great. 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 And then, Brent, back to you. And just talk about a little bit uh, your strengths as a player right now, as a point guard, like you mentioned, and then maybe some areas you're looking to improve upon before your senior season. Um, I feel like finding the right the pass and like being a step ahead has really helped me and my dribbling has gotten me to be very improved and then uh, what I'm working on in the summer is my shooting like and driving better. All right great thanks and Faith same to you just kind of strengths in your game right now and then things you're looking to improve upon before next high school season. My strengths right now is probably shooting and then communicating and then my defense is getting better. But um, during this quarantine, I'm trying to improve my ball handling and creating a shot. And then just getting to the rim. All right, great. Grace? Um, I'll probably improve my handles, um, my footwork, um, and just try to get in better shape so I could go longer and probably mental toughness. That's, that's what I'm working on. Okay, what do you think your strengths are right now in your game? Um, mm, I feel like my strengths are that I'm probably more athletic than the kids that's on the court, so I can get away with stuff. And my rebounding and shot blocking. Got it, got it, got it, thank you. And lastly, Anna, your strengths and then things you're looking to improve on. Uh, my strengths, I would be my, like, versatility, like, to be able to, if I have a small guard in me, then I'll, like, bang him down low. Or if I have a big guard in me, then I'll be able to drive to the basket or shoot the deer. And improving, I would say getting in shape. I know, like, last year I was watching myself, and it was I was not in shape at all. So this year I'm, like, running every day and trying to get in the gym, dad pushing me and stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Good, good, good. Uh, last question then for the, each of you, and, and we'll go back to Brand to start off. Just uh, recruiting, you all are finishing up your junior year one last summer before senior season and starting to have to make decisions. So, Brand, for you, really, what are, what are some things you're kind of looking for in a school right now? What are location? Are you looking to stay closer to home? Do you have a major you're starting to look into yet? What's kind of going through your head there as you start to look for schools? So I'm hoping to be on a winning team, and I don't, it's not really a big preference of where I go. I don't mind being close, but I'm okay with going far. And, um. Any, like, any, like, style of play you're looking for? Any, like, a major you're looking to study yet? 
Um, I am undecided yet, but I feel like more of a five out type player, four out one in my type of style. Okay, gotcha. Good, good. And then Faith, kind of the same questions, just what you're looking for in a school. Have you thought about kind of the style of play, what you want to study, location? What's kind of going through your head there? The style of play, probably like some up tempo type of play. Because I'm used to like pressing the whole game and then like still being able, be able to uh, shoot and be an offense. But I'm my major probably physical therapy. That's what I've been looking into. And then oh, yeah. the since it doesn't really matter. Like Bren was saying, like I'm okay with being close, but I'm okay with being far away. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, great. And Grace, for you, just with the the offers that you have. Again, kind of wrapping up junior year, moving into the summer before senior season. Have you begun narrowing down that list? Have you been were you able to take many visits before the the whole shutdown happened? Um, yeah, I did plan to take some before the shutdown happened. That's kind of you know, I'm still trying to see how things are looking, and yes, I I did narrow down the list. So, yeah. Okay. Do you just have a, a list of maybe five, eight schools? Is that something you're you're making public yet, or something you're still kind of keeping between you and the coaches? Yes, yeah, something I'm kind of just keeping between me and the coaches. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. And then the kind of the similar questions: the style of play, the the major. What what are some things you're thinking about there? Um, major wise, I don't know yet. Maybe something in business and real estate. I don't know though. But um, well, style of playing. I want to have a fast style of play where I could do a um, four in, I mean, four out, one in, and a five out. But, yeah, just a fast style of play, a team that likes to play in transition, um, and a team that's going to develop me being that swing type of player. So, yeah. Okay, great, great. And then, Anna, kind of similar, just – the offers that you have, have you begun narrowing down your list? Do you have any specific schools that you're kind of focusing in on right now? Um, I haven't really narrowed it down as, uh, like, specifically, but I feel like I'm pretty open as far as, like, all the um, – because, I mean, it being corona time and, like, quarantine, I feel like it gives an opportunity for all of us to get to know each other. So I haven't been doing any narrowing down yet. So, yeah. Okay. And then style of play and major, any, any specific thoughts there? Yeah, a style of play, I agree, Grace, as far as, like, the transition, to, like, running and being fast-paced, like, a team that could help me, uh, like, develop into, like, a better player and be able to push me and be more competitive. And then major, I'm a major in uh, financing, so. All right, great. Well, that's all I have for you four, so I appreciate you guys uh, answering those questions and hopping on. And then we'll go ahead and ask uh, Brianna and Morgan to unmute, and we can get started now that you guys are – Finishing up freshman year, rising sophomores. That may sound weird already being sophomores. Uh, but, Brianna, we'll start with you. If you can just introduce yourself, name, high school, uh, grad year, height, position. I'm Brianna Hill. I go to Marion Catholic High School, um, class of 2023, and I'm a 5'11 guard. All right. Morgan? I am Morgan McDermott. I go to Beecher, class of 2023, and I am a 5'9 guard. All right. Thanks. And then, Brianna, just – how long have you been playing with Barry with Example Sports and kind of talk about what that's done for your game, for, I guess, improvements that you've made over the last couple of years? This will be my second year playing with Example. Uh, my game has definitely improved, especially my recruitment process. Um, Barry has definitely taken my game to the next level. And since I'm so young, I'm still definitely growing. Okay. And then Morgan, same question, just how long have you been with Example and, and how have you seen playing with them kind of develop your game? This will be my second year and the level of competition is just so high and it's definitely made me work harder and become more of a leader. All right, great. Um, Brianna, then just talking about your game a little bit, uh, your strengths as a player, things you're looking into improve on. One of my strengths as a player is definitely uh, in transition. I'm great in the open floor, hard to anticipate. Um, defense really doesn't know how to guard, really, and transition like that because you're very hard to anticipate when you have the ball. And so I feel like definitely when I get the outlet pass in the wing, it's definitely really going to score or I'm going to pass it off for somebody else to score. But um, one of the things I'm definitely, uh, what is it, working on 
Yeah, improving on. Improving on. Um, improving on my speed, getting faster, and just maintaining to stay on the game longer and go faster. Yeah. All right, great. And Morgan, same question. Just your strengths right now uh, in your game, and then things you're looking to improve on before a sophomore year. I would say my strengths are probably shooting and creating mm -hmm. space off the dribble, and I'm definitely improving my ball handling and getting in shape and driving. Awesome. And then just to, to kind of touch briefly on this with you guys, just being a little younger, but Brianna, I have a handful of offers already. Have you been able to really visit those schools before lockdown? Were you able just to talk to those coaches at certain times last year or even just through coach or, or what's kind of gone on recruiting for you so far? Recruiting so far, it's been pretty good. I've been able to go to a couple of those schools. Um, we are still in contact, but so far it's been pretty good. Okay, what schools were you able to visit? I was able to visit um, Michigan University, University of Illinois, uh, Milwaukee University. Yes, so okay. far. Okay, awesome, that's great. And then Morgan as well, just for recruiting again, just entering your sophomore year is that something that's kind of taken shape for you yet something that you've been the wheels have been really turning for or is it still you're in the process of kind of deciding what you're looking for in a college yeah i had a phone call the other day with college but i'm still just figuring early it out stages early stages and watching all these and very talked about just the success that all the girls have had in this program is it something you've been able to kind of watch them and, and follow them and see what they've done with their recruiting to kind of bring back some some ideas and some advice for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, that's what I have for both of you guys. So, Brianna Morgan, thank you. Uh, the Verizon seniors, thank you guys again for for hopping on with us here. Uh, and that's all I have, Don. I'll kick it over to you. Okay. And I will actually jump back to Barry real quick and let him. Uh, I know, obviously, quite often the girls don't. Uh, sing their praises maybe as what as well as what they should um and there may just be other things that uh, barry remembered that he wanted to add so anything you want to throw in about any of these girls barry that you you don't think they highlighted enough or anything else that you'd like to add about example sports well i, I think just kind of going back to the girls about really briefly on um a few of them like brand i, I i've loved watching her um show that she could compete at a higher level. So sometimes you play in a smaller school environment, you know, and I remember Brian the first day she walked in the tryouts and my point guard was going to IUPUI this year, Trinity Duckworth was like, oh, I like her because she just walked in and she's tough. And, you know, we, we you know, we're fortunate. Like we think about even like the prep schools rankings. I think we have maybe 23 girls in our program that are in your guys top 30 or 40, you know, which is pretty cool. Um, and, so to see her walk in that environment, and she's just like, I'm ready to go. And we're all like, yo, who is this kid? You know, and um, we gave her the name Saucy because she, you know, she played with some flair and, you know, like she belonged. And, you know, um, I don't just give herself enough credit for the way she defends full court, putting pressure on people. And those, she does those types of things that are going to give her a chance to play in some really good programs. And I think the last couple of schools, I, we heard from Kent State about her um, last week. We just sent some film out. Drury, one of the best Division II schools, if not in the country, you know. So she started Northern Illinois. She's been in contact with. So it's been really nice watching her, you know, grow through that process. And then Faith, um, it's funny because Faith was looked like she was nervous to do anything um, starting off. And then to see her go on the stage, and I think she went to the three-point um, championship and lost by one shot, I think, to be the state champion in the three-point shootout. Um, she's, and if she's a little louder, maybe Jake could have got her on this, on this best shooter. So we got to get, get her name out there even more to know she's one of the best shooters there is um, in the state. But Faith is a phenomenal defender, you know what I'm saying, and a, and a competitor. And just to watch her raise her game, um, I mean, she's shooting. She's making 500 shots a day doing quarantine and 1,000 on the weekends, you know. And I don't know if you start asking kids specifically what they're doing. She's doing two-a-day workouts right now, you know, with her brother and her little sister. And, and so, you know, it just shows the big-time level of commitment, you know, our girls have to go on to that next level, you know. And she ain't doing it the whole time on social media, you know what I mean? Like, she's just getting the work in and it's there and – if her dad don't post it, you don't really even know about it, you know, but she knows she's got those two days, but watching her raise up and, you know, um, go to the next level has been really cool. And, you know, I get on, um, I think you went to Grace the next time. Grace is, I mean, Grace, I, I had to convince her to dribble the basketball in eighth grade. Like you're more than just a shot blocker. And most people don't know Grace's dad um, who went to the University of Arkansas was considered one of the most athletic players ever. 
I mean, there's an article with him and some of the most athletic guys that ever played a game of basketball. And um, we were watching The Last Dance tonight. I'm also going to watch The Last Dance tonight. But I was fortunate enough to be a part of Michael Jordan's comeback campaign. So I got a chance to spend two years um, throughout, throughout the time when he was making his comeback with Grace's father. And, you know, when I watched Grace, it was easy for me to push her because I knew what her DNA was. I knew how athletic, how talented her dad was. So I knew she could morph into this 3-4. And, you know, um, I, I made a statement the other day. You know, she matched up against – we played ranked opponents every single game, and she showed that she more than belonged in a top class, if not been the best player on the court, by what most other people would say, not even just me, because we're supposed to brag about our kids, but um, been the, you know, the best player on the court every single time this happened, which led us to, I didn't talk about that, led us to the national championship game where we lost to five McDonald's All-Americans in the championship game for the UA um, championship, which we you know, we, we were ready to go compete, and Anna's trying to box out the six foot seven, um, number two player in the country, and we, we just, you know, but, the way we got there, we were never expected to be there, you know, but these are these, these kids from Illinois. And um, for the most part, they really went out and battled the best programs across the country and Grace stepped up every single game. And it goes to Anna, you know, I push Anna and Grace to just be leaders and be more vocal. And I think Anna, who actually she was injured um, the early part of spring and she battled through a leg injury all the way through the summertime too. So I don't even feel like they got a chance to just see the absolute um, high level of versatility and, Anna's an elite shooter. I mean, you guys have covered that in, in your articles, too. She's an elite, an elite shooter with that size and, and that handle and competitive. You know, our kids are putting in the workouts. What have you been doing this week? You know, they look up. Anna's been pushing the truck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I ran 50 sprints on the football field in the snow the other day, and I was pushing the truck. You know what I mean? Like, so she's doing that next level stuff to push herself there. And Anna's a 5.0, um, you know, student. You know, she's getting recruited by Ivy League schools as well as, you know, high mid major. So, um, and just her IQ and her feel for the game is, is big time, too. And those two youngins on the end, I, I guess I talked about them a little bit, though, too. Morgan, um, Morgan's been training in our program for years, and she just moved up to the elite side um, these last two years or two. And she's has – she's so athletic um, and has got a good feel for the game. So watching her game grow. We threw in the fire last year. We had Brianna and a couple other kids got hurt going into um, the playoffs. And we got Mo off our A-grade team, like, hey, you're going to go down and play on one of the biggest stages in the country for the first time. By the way, you get no practices. Uh, one practice, right, Mo? One practice, hop on the road and meet us down there three days later. You're going to play in front of 25 college coaches for the first time. You go and play at the next level. She handled it like a champ, um, too. So just seeing her upside. And then Bree, Bree's a class act kid. Again, another high academic kid, also a high IQ kid um, that just gives you whatever you ask for, you know. And I can play her on any level. I mean, she can play on the top level, but she's a selfless kid. She's like, you know, wherever I belong, whatever we need to do, coach, I'm there. And so um, just a tribute to her. And I think the sky's the limit for her um, as well, too. So, I mean, just a good group. And we have a ton of girls that obviously could have on here, but these girls really, um, I'm thankful that you guys invited them on there. They really represent well and, and the bright future that we have as a program. And now individually at the next level, too. Coach is going to get some – any one of these kids is going to get a great, a great culture key that's going to bring winning to your culture, winning environment, winning attitude. So thanks, Don, for that opportunity as well, too, to share on those, on these great young ladies as well, too. Sure. Great. Well, then I'll go ahead and wrap up. Uh, before we cut off, one of the things that I want to say that is always neat for me uh, when we do these, and uh, it, uh, Barry certainly lived right up to it, um, and that is as we're hearing these coaches talk about uh, their program and, and what they do for these girls. And uh, it's great to hear that it's not just a quote unquote back basketball factory. Um, you know, you're there for the girls, you've got programs for the girls um, to help them outside of basketball, to help them with whatever their needs are. I mean, we would like to believe that everybody grows up in a, in a great environment and never has anything bad happen to them and things like this pandemic doesn't happen. But reality is none of that is true. And everybody needs support. So to hear the support that you're offering to these kids, Barry, that's extremely commendable. And I want to applaud you for that. And it's, uh, it's great to hear those things. Um, and that's why I like to do these things. It's great to talk to the players. It's great to get them the exposure. But it's even neater for me to, to like I said, to learn about the programs, to learn about the people that are out there. I'm all the way down in Edwardsville. And there's a bunch of stuff that happens up north that I don't really hear. I guess to read about in a paper about, you know, who scored however many points. This is a way I get to know a lot of people and I enjoy doing it. So thank you very much to everybody, Barry, starting with you and to everybody else for taking the time to jump on here and be a part of it. Jacob, thanks for uh, being a part of it again. Anything you would like to add before we get off, Jacob? 
Uh, just last thing, again, Recruiting Notebook Sunday. Uh, it'll be live here in a couple hours. I actually I brought in a couple of new offers this week, so we'll be talking a little bit about her. But uh, just to encourage everyone to check it out. And thank you all again so much for coming on. It was great to hear you guys talk and meet some of you virtually for the first time. Thank you. And I got another offer, too. We haven't posted it yet from uh, Cornell, another Ivy League offer. I got to figure out how go. to post it because, you know, it's like the academic plus the whatever, though, too. So I'm a little slow on that one, but yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Well, with that, then I'll wrap it up again. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time. It was great. We appreciate it. Have a great, great rest of your Sunday. Thank you. You too.